Hello world, this is Shruti Pandey and today I have with me a dear friend, continents apart, but still uh, in touch, always checking on me. She's just not a woman in sales, but she is also a human with heart is how I think of her and how I know her because she's the only one who constantly or intermittently keeps checking on me and my mother who's undergoing a cancer recurrence treatment. And I can't thank you enough for checking on me, Ima. Thank you so much for giving me your time and doing this podcast with me today. Uh, thank you so much. It makes me really happy um, to, uh, to create that reaction in somebody else because, yeah, um, it's, it's hard. Um, it, it's hard for the people who have to deal with the treatment. It's hard for everybody who is around it. And um, I, I had exposure to that myself. And I think once you've gone through it yourself, yeah, you tend to feel what the other person is feeling in that moment and in that life. Um, and yeah, sometimes people just want to let off some steam or sometimes you just want to feel understood and know that it's it's completely normal to feel defeated, to feel, you know, terrible about it, to be angry, to be mad and whatever your emotions, um, you know, will express what's going on. So but thank you for the opportunity. I'm so glad to see you kind of start uh, your podcast journey and become, uh, you know, more active on LinkedIn. Um, you know, because, it's, yeah, I've been following you for a while, so. Yeah, ironically, we, we worked in a place at the same time or maybe for a, bit, a little bit of overlap, but I think this entire sameness in our personal lives connected us even better is how I see that and it's so much more human you know to get a message from somebody and checking on you uh, which is rare and genuine so it means a lot to me and I congratulate you on your LinkedIn lives and podcast as well because you're not just uh, a great human and a, a woman in sales but also you are amazing with bringing different people, different experts and your network in and sharing the wisdom and knowledge. And I can go on with the list of similarities between us, but I've created three questions for you. So let me know when I can start it off or if you have something more to say, I can probably give you those space and then I can start off the questions. Yeah, no, no, I'm like, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm just really happy to, um, you know, to have the opportunity to be here with you today and connect. Uh, may it be virtual uh, one day, hopefully in person. So yeah, no fire away. One day, yes, one day. So my first question for you is, uh, what are some of the typical challenges in sales? Hmm. <laughs> wow, the list is long, uh, is what <laughs> I'm saying. Whatever you no. feel like, yeah. Um, it really depends. And sales is so diverse, whether you're doing technology sales, whether you're doing hardware sales, traditional software sales, or completely like non-tech, non-IT sales. And challenges are, I think for most people around achieving their target. Um, you know, that's always, it's always that pressure, no matter where you are in what sales environment, it's always that pressure to get to the goalpost. And a lot of people have the challenge that they reduce themselves to those KPIs and those measures. Um, and they often forget that you might make the month, you might make the week, you might make the quarter, but that doesn't mean that your performance isn't great. And they're focusing too much on the outcome versus what they can control, which is the activity and the work ethic that they put in every single day. And I think that's the biggest challenge, getting into a mindset where you focus on both the activity and the outcome, and you find a healthy balance where you also reflect positively and look at yourself and go, right, I might not have made all my weekly targets this week, but here's what I have achieved. And then enter the weekend, you know, with a kind of like sense of achievement and, and that, that proud moment. And I think that's very, very, very hard. And often companies don't provide that environment for their, um, for their employees either, where it's just like KPIs, KPIs, performance, performance. And I think that's that's a real challenge for people. And yeah, that's something that I'm actively trying to change and create, you know, a, a space where 
people can still be proud even if they don't make it to the top every single week every single month every single quarter so i just want to understand this better is this challenge because of sales or because of the pressure of the kpis to be met or both i think it's a combination of both so first i mean even if you look at your even if you look at yourself if asked like what are the things that you don't do well you probably like can instantly list five things yet many people if you ask them what are the five things that you can do really well many people will go good question that's because we naturally focus on the negatives and in an environment that is already you know kind of like pressured into achieving certain goals paired with that I'm only focusing on negative thing, they can quickly spiral out of control. So I think it's both like a natural kind of mindset that people have versus having, you know, pressure in a sales role to achieve your targets, because that's typically how your performance is measured. Sense. Wow. I feel like sympathizing more and more <laughs> now. Yeah. If, if I haven't worked enough with salespeople, I know this side, but it makes you even humanely uh, sympathize more with people and think that, okay, these guys are also doing a difficult and tough job. Uh, continuing this momentum, my second question is a little specific because my second question is really, what are the specific challenges for a woman in sales? Like, do you think there is a little difference between being a woman in sales and it can have some specific challenges to it? Yeah, absolutely. Um where do I begin? Uh, <laughs> your time. Take all your time. But I think there's there's a lot, there's cultural differences that need to be taken into consideration. Um, and not every country, not every culture is open to accommodating or focused on accommodating women in the workplace or is actively pushing women into these kind of roles, especially when they progress into leadership. But I think one of the biggest challenges is that women like us ourselves, we are very judgmental of one another. And most women actually suffer from imposter syndrome and men do too. And women, because their natural role is to be, you know, the, the primary caretaker, yeah. They are not only perceived themselves as the primary caretaker, but they are also perceived as the primary caretaker in a business context. And that's simple, tiny little things like in a HR policy where you get maternity leave or paternity leave, that is dedicated to a woman and um, not to a man. And that creates an inequality where a woman then automatically feels obliged, okay, the child is my responsibility. Right. Taking care of the child is my responsibility. And naturally at one point, you cannot do two full-time jobs at the same time. Yeah. So you then have to make a decision. Either you have the support and, you know, by support, I mean, from a company perspective, from a home perspective where your husband steps in and takes over responsibilities so that you can, you know, do a career and you know, be there for the family. But you can't be in two places at the same time. If your child is sick, your child is sick. And not every workplace is accommodating, particularly in sales. It can be challenging as well. Um, because, you know, you go on maternity leave. We discussed this the other day um, at, a, at a conference. You go on maternity leave and all the work, all the opportunities you work for, they're being given to somebody else. And when you return, you start from scratch. And sometimes it takes a long time. So I think these are some of the challenges that women will face at one point or another in their career when they decide, if they decide um, to uh, have a family as well, where they ultimately need to make a decision where to focus their attention. Um, and then the second is there's comments, there's always comments. Women get degraded to be doing the secretary jobs um, oh, can you take notes here? Um, or if there's birthday parties to be organized, presents to be organized, it's a woman's job. 
it's it's these subtle things and often they're not even meant in any bad way but for somebody who already feels who might already feel like i don't know if i can really do this um i i don't know if i can rise up to the challenge getting these kind of comments will just feed into that imposter that keeps telling us we're not good enough and i think it's even scientifically proven that men tend to overestimate their abilities versus women underestimate mm. their abilities and i think that's that's something that is really really critical as well whereas like men will say i can easily do that no problem right. um, even if they're not equipped to do this at all versus women right. they will go no I, i don't think i can do that they don't trust themselves to do it and they need more confidence um and and tools and techniques to build that confidence in order to you know maybe take a small risk and jump into the cold sea and you know experience uh, what that uh, what that will be like i can't tell you every time you were talking about uh, a particular point a particular challenge i literally was revisiting everything that has happened with me <laughs> and if if you know i come from a technology background then into solutions it re, it reminded me of still the same challenges like it's it's same because ultimately i am a woman i am in technology i am in sales i am at the cusp of it it doesn't matter I, i'll give you a small incident where uh it was a it was one of the organizations i worked we have a cake cutting ceremony or whatever for one of the team members and the guy cuts the cake and then he looks towards the girls in the team and he's like oh now you cut the cake and distribute it among everybody else and i was like what you you just did the cutting you can do it yourself and just make some more pieces so that everybody takes it but it's not you know it's it's maybe the conditioning because that's how we see at homes like okay i did this now mom will cut it and give it to everyone or something of the sort or and again the caregiving thing it, it's so natural that uh, i don't know about you but i as i started aging or growing a little old i started looking at my team members like my kids and like taking them under my wings and protecting them with everything that is you know bad in the organization and standing like a shield with an armor and i also remember the first time when my mo- mom was diagnosed with cancer there was zero support given to me in my workplace i hardly had any work from home policies and that being the biggest bank of the planet i still had like zero support from them so many times it's like just understood okay a, a woman will just manage things and i'm not even mad at and managing that for my mom taking care of the entire family it gave me another respect for women who are married and have kids and i don't understand how they manage all this ball game together right because it's difficult taking care of the kids taking care of your family taking care of your job it's like doing so many jobs full time at the same time so kudos to you it's not easy i understand it might's not easy yeah and i think it's it's that kind of judgment and it doesn't matter which path you choose um you will receive judgment and you will receive and that's and, and i think that's an important one to 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 know you will receive as much judgment from other women as you will from men i experienced that when i was when i had my first daughter in germany um where the mindset is very different and how kids are raised um people were asking me what you're sending your child into crash when she's only 10 months old and i was like she's 10 months old um <laughs> we don't have you know in ireland it's six months uh, maternity leave and then you can opt for three months unpaid and it's like okay after that they will have to go to crash so most children go to crash at seven months and they go full time and in germany that was perceived very differently because people were used to a different standard because typically you would stay at home 12 months because you get paid for that duration so they were looking at me like oh why wouldn't you and a lot of women then opt to work part time because again it's an opportunity that is granted to them but that is not the standard everywhere so you will always run into people who will judge you yeah and it's it, it's sometimes really hard when you are still you haven't figured out everything yourself you haven't figured do i want to go for the career you know do i want to 
you know, focus all my attention on family. And you're like in this like midst of hormonal post natal distress where, you know, everything is overwhelming and you're, you're, you're trying to figure things out and you question everything that you've ever done. And if it's still the right thing for you to do moving forward. Yeah. And then on top of that, you're being judged from all different sides. Um, and it starts with your mother-in-law. <laughs> I was judging you for the house not being clean. Not that it's the case in my case. My mother-in-law is fantastic, but you often hear these stories about mother-in-laws coming over, even your mother's you know, checking judge. the dust. Even Sorry? Your mother's get, even your mother's yes. get you. It's not just mother-in-law. Yeah. It's even mother's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, and it's like a small little thing. It's like uh, even when you, have, uh, when you have people over in your house and you want to make sure everything is clean. Yeah. And it's like, it's these things I met like men just would never feel this way but I think we're also kind of like taught this way because even if you look at children's books yeah it's always the woman in the book who is cleaning or cooking or doing any of that like yeah I never came across this as much but it was so funny I was like I was reading through these children's books and I'm like okay the mom was hoovering and then the dad came home from work and I'm like like this <laughs> this is not reality today, you know? Um, But that's how we're influenced subconsciously. That is how we're influenced in the way we are thinking and then the way we are brought up. And that's why some people will judge you without wanting to judge you. It's just, that's how they see the world. And I think that's really challenging for women. I mean, what if we are not the damsel in distress anymore, right? (laughs) It's just for the stories. And again, I think it's, it's, I don't know, it's how the way God or nature has made us women that uh, we are so hard on ourselves. I mean, that's the biggest challenge or weakness I have because I want to do everything perfectly. I don't know about imposter, but being hard on yourself and you have been calling out the biggest thing, which is even other women don't support a woman, which is a big, big challenge. I mean, again, if comparing with technology, we have such fewer women in technology. And mm-hmm. if we have a little bit of people or community or female, uh, it's it's difficult. And it's not about understanding and being appreciative of each other, which is also not too good. So it's not just about the other gender or genders, but also from the same gender as well. It makes sense. And we can have a lengthier podcast on just this one question. <laughs> but I, I'll move on to my third and the last question that I have for you, which is, will you encourage your kids to get a job in sales when they grow up? And whatever your answer is, yes or no, why, why would that be? Mm. No. I wouldn't encourage them to go for a career in sales because I don't want to influence my children into a path that they haven't chosen themselves. So if they develop a skill set or if they have a skill set where, and they they would enjoy the work in sales um, and it's something that they have actively chosen as a path for themselves, I would absolutely encourage them and help them along the way. But I would not encourage them to pursue a specific career path just because I have, you know, chosen that. And because I thought it was a good path for me to follow. That doesn't mean they're they're individual human beings and what has worked for me might not necessarily work for them. And even if they have great skill set, like my four-year-old is a top negotiator, and I think it would be a waste if she didn't go into sales, uh, but I would never actively encourage her because they will find their path and they will find their way, and I want them to figure that out by themselves. So what the only thing I will encourage them to do is to figure that out and to help them with the right toolkit to figure out what it is that they want to do. Um, and and also make mistakes like maybe I'll choose something and I'll figure out it's not for me um, and I want them to to know that that's okay as well that was the most genuine answer that I've ever received in all the interviews that I've been <laughs> seriously I, I mean it and I just want to ask 
following up on that does becoming a parent change you because that answer was so genuine and heart hitting i really felt like asking you like does becoming a parent change you mm it does um it, it does in a way where you know you have you have a responsibility to share or you know give everything you possibly can to another human being and try to set them up for a life that is fulfilling for them and sometimes it's very hard to take a step back and go am i doing this for me or am i doing this in the interest of my child and i think that's a that's a really difficult one where a lot of the times we we let our own you know experience bad or positive guide how you know we how we talk and what we teach to our children but sometimes we're forgetting that they are individual human beings and they might figure out their own things um and we need to allow them that kind of space as well where yeah so yes it definitely changes you because it changes your perspective in general on how you deal with other people as well this this really has been a uh, a very eye opening a very humanly and a very perfect uh, podcast for me and i can't thank you enough for that ima uh, do you have any parting thoughts before we wrap this up no um not really yeah it's been it's been really great um coming on and i think we need more people like like you to to create a space for people like us so that we can build community and we can reach more people who identify with what we share um about our lives about our careers um because i think that's the most important knowing there's others out there regardless of where they are in the world you just always know they're there and they kind of like become your safety net so thank you it was a great experience thank you this this was the most genuine podcast i've ever had thank you so much for that it means a lot thank you